Lagrange multipliers. So when do we use the method of Lagrange multipliers to do optimization? To find the maximum or minimum of a function f of x, y, and z subject to some limitation, to some constraints. constraints like G function equals to K, we can apply the Lagrange multipliers method. What are we going to do? We're going to take the gradient of the function F and set it equals to lambda, the gradient of function G. Find all points satisfying this equation and then evaluate your function f at these points. Solve this equation and evaluate the function f at different values. Okay, writing this down is not that difficult. The difficult part is to solve the equation using different algebra method. So it's all going back to algebra. You need to feel comfortable about algebra to solve this equation. This is the calculus part, taking the Gradient of F, setting it equal to lambda. Gradient of G, this part is calculus part. The rest is algebra. Let's take a look at one example to see what do we have here. I'm going to erase this because I need space. At the same time, I'm going to write down the steps in applying Lagrange multipliers. So in this example, we have the following scenario. A rectangular box without a lid. Is to be made from Twelve square meter of cardboard. Okay, so far so good. So far we have some pieces of information. Find the maximum volume of such a box. Okay, very good. What is our goal? Our goal is to identify what F is, take its gradient and set it equals to lambda, the gradient of the constraint, which is function G. Function G has always some constraints. Very good. Let us begin. We try to maximize the volume of a box. So suppose X, Y, and Z are the length, width, and height of the box. So what's the volume formula? The volume is x 
times y times z. So we try to maximize this function. This is your f. This is function f. Now, what about the constraint? What about G? Our function G, G of X, Y, and Z is equal to 12. But how do I formulate this function? I have my K, but what's the relation between X, Y, and a Z. Remember that we're trying to find to create a box without lid to be made from a 12 square meter cardboard. Your function G, the constraint can be written as 2xz plus 2yz plus xy equals to 12. I have my volume, I have the constraint. Now I'm going to apply the Lagrange multipliers method. So gradient of my volume, which is gradient of the volume, which is the partial derivative with respect to x, y, z. The partial derivative with respect to y, x, z. The partial derivative with respect to z, x, y is equal to lambda, the gradient of my constraint. With respect to x, I have 2z plus y. With respect to y, I have 2z plus x. And with respect to z, I have 2x plus 2y. I'm done with the calculus part. Now, pure algebra. Let us begin. We have yz equals to lambda times 2z plus y. yz equals to lambda 2z plus y. I have xz equals to lambda. Remember that you have to distribute your lambda into each component. Lambda parenthesis 2z plus x. And you have xy equals to lambda, parentheses, 2x plus 2y. Okay, here we go. We also know that there is a relation between x, y, and z. And on the right-hand side, we have 12. Now take a look. My yz is equal to lambda, 2z plus y. If I multiply each one of these equations by the missing variable, I'm creating the following system. I have x, y, z equals to lambda parentheses 2x, z plus x, y. multiplying the second equation by y. So here I have x, y, z, which is equal to lambda, parentheses, 2, y, z, plus y, x, or x, y. And finally, multiplying the last equation by z. x, y, z equals to lambda, 2, x, z, plus to y z. Very well. So what is the next step here for me? All of these are equal to each other. X, Y, Z is equal to X, Y, Z equals to X, Y, Z. It means that I can set these equations equal to each other, two by two, right? So 
let me set these two equations equal to each other. Let us call it equation one, equation two, equation three. Set one equals to two. If you set one equals to two, you can cancel out lambda and lambda. You get two xz plus xy equals to two yz plus xy. Okay, so as you can see, we can cancel out xy and you get two xz equals to two yz or x equals to y. So far, so good. X is equal to Y. I'm going to use this equation one more time to get the missing elements. Very good. Now, for example, you can set one and three equal to each other. You can set two and three equal to each other. Let us set two and three equal to each other. If two is equal to three, then what do we get? We get lambda and lambda, they cancel out. We get 2yz plus yx equals to 2xz plus 2yz. So 2yz, 2yz, and here you have, let me see. In this case, you get yx equals to 2xz or you get your y equals to 2z. So my x is equal to y, my y equals to 2z, and then let's see what else I can do. And x is equal to 2z. So, so far, I have all the information that I need. I'm going to use the constraint and find my z value. Use the constraint. It says I have 2xz, 2, 2z times z plus 2, 2z, z plus 2z times 2z equals to 12. Okay, very good. I have 4z squared plus 4z squared plus 4z squared equals to 12. Three z squared is equal to three. So z as the length is equal to one. When z is equal to one, y is two x is 2. There. So I have found my x, y, and z. 2, 2, and 1 is the point or the measurement where we get the maximum volume. The volume is x, y, z, 2 times 2 times 1, or the volume is 4. The constraint is the surface area for your box. Surface area. So if you have a box with the base x, y, x, y, and the height z, the area of this box, the surface area for this box is the area below, which is the base, x, y, then you have two parallel sides, which is your x, z, plus x, z, two x, z, and also you have these two sides, which are parallel to each other, it's going to be yz, one yz here, one yz on the other side of the box, so you get two yz. Okay. 